example, hello, good morning to everyone after after the party. And <laughs> thank you, I hope you're from the University of Granada. I would like to thank the first organizers of the session for the gig session of this of this Saturday. I'm going to talk about uh, Westeros, uh, especially doing a archaeological analysis of castles. So I studied castles or I studied castles in real life. And why why not? I studied also in in the Seven Kingdoms. This is a uh, well, to get it start, uh, I hope that all of you know the series of the league and also the books. I would prefer more to the books than the TV series because it's much coherent material. But all you know that the Seven Kingdoms are a feudal society, a classical feudal society in the sense of the late medieval Western European. It's a, a, a hierarchical society based on vassalage and led by a king that as, as the supreme judge that have to to back with all the other noble houses to maintain the power, especially after they lose their dragons. It was uh, kind of nuclear bombs in Westeros. So that's, uh, that's the, the society. It goes also the focus of the books and the series is the novel, the novel, the novel houses and not the common, the common people. So this, this novel dwells and lives in castles that are also in, like in medieval Europe and those are the, the central places for the narration and also central places for the society of, of, of Westeros. So you have some of these very nice castles also, the cities and towns of Westeros are basically function as feudal castles because all of them are, are the seat of a noble. There's no thing like we're just in the Seven Kingdoms that were you see of uh, merchant cities that is for the far of Essos. So every every city is also a, a political the political seat of a, a lord. Even the the capital, the King's, Land, King's Landing, is the the field of the of the king that resides always in the red keep, and also the red keep and all the 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 gates of the of the city function as castles from the outside and the, and inside of the city in case of revolt. So basically, every uh, noble has every noble person aside from the hedge knights has his castle, his towers, his castle. Some of them even many castles as is you see in the in the valley of Arryn with the 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 nice system of defensive system of, of five castles to, to reach to the to the Eerie. These castles has a lot have a lot of typologies in the well, in medieval times. Uh, well, I think we all love or hate the typology archaeological typologies. Yes. So we have river castles, a river and even fortified bridge at the twins of the of the phrase, coastal castles as uh, storms and most or even rock castles such as impressive, uh, impressive as the Eury. Also, the, there are very typologies on not only in location but in building materials and techniques. This is also uh, uh, my, one of my main focus studies, and that differs from even from castles made on wood to aslar or even ice in the case of the of the walls. And all of these are always uh, to. Uh, what material to use is always a, ch uh, a, very a choice and uh, choosing from the, uh, from the laws. Not only on the economic level, but also ha can have another function, as in the case of, this not in Seven Kingdoms, as in, this, in, in Essos, in the case of cards, the, uh, the three walls are, the material is used for aesthetic purpose, with all, all of the walls with different materials, one from each other. And these fortresses and these castles has also a many uh, levels of, of functions, as in medieval times, aside from the the usual one is the war and is the the main in the in the case of the books because they are telling basically a civil war, a massive civil war. So they also the political administrative centers of the lords that are the political power and also the judicial power of the of the kingdom. So they're also the prison and the law courts of of this uh, this society. Gather in sometimes even settlement, as in the case of King's, Land, King's Landing, that uh, is spread uh, again around the after the building of the of the fortress by the by the king by Icon the Conqueror. And also, is the place to show luxury um, to the to the people. And uh, most of the time, the castles are the very much the identity of the of the noble houses in Westeros. So I think for this for this reason, they're 
try in battle as many times as Stark, like we as Winterfell, as as I about to try because the the castle is the physical uh, um, place of the identity of the of the house. So how to study these castles archaeologically? Well, it's always in space and, and time because all these castles evolve around the have a place in, like a current place in the location on the geography of Westeros and evolves over the time of, of Westeros. Like it's very, 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 very large. So also are made in the materiality of these castles varies uh, according to the cultural cause of the Seven Kingdom society. So to analyze these things and um, this magical this fantasy world uh, I took the more processalist approach to the to geography so I built a GIS of Westeros <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> taking the only uh, reference of distance that we have uh, for visual in the books that is the the length of the wall that is I think something like 300 leagues or something like that I plot every using the official maps I uh, every everyone there to locate the physical and political center. So this was quite a, a long, a long work, but it's always worth to procrastinate from the from the, from the thesis. <laughs> well, so well, this this political maps from the I see a sample for I have for all of that. And the good thing of having this GIS is because we have the surface and the distance of the of this world. So it's Quite, quite large, it's, uh, nearly six million square kilometers, and you can see the north is the third part of the of the rail in south, and you have like here a comparison with uh, actual Africa to to get to know the distance. So it's it's quite big. As a, to, in fact, to be a, a feudal kingdom, it's, it would be very unmanageable. So the other good thing from the surface is I can well, we can do some kind of spatial analysis limited because only half the distance and have the height of well, no, this would be very much interesting but well it's as a pro approximation is is very useful so here you have the center of the of each of the of the rails uh, to well, to compare with the capital the political capital of one of these. And you can see there are mostly two patterns of in the in the swallow in case of the I think it's no. I can you can see the the courses, but I think I have well okay, I can see oh so anyway, wait. This two, two, two. these two patterns are the first one is most usually this all the coastal cities with the castle that are very far from the centroid, but it's understandable in medieval times that they prefer the the coast to both for commerce and also for the being the faster way of communication, but the other, all the other are very close to the to the center town. Being Winterfell in the north, or Riverrun in the in the Riverlands, or even High Garden in the in the ridge. Uh, they could have two answers. The first one is George Martin is very lazy uh, doing world building, but could have also a logical uh, inference because in having. Uh, a central place in the in the real and the in the geography is always useful for the family that holds in the in the time of of fighting to the to other to the other rivals. That was the case before the unification of the seven kingdoms and the petty the petty kingdoms on the on the tide. I have also plotted all the battles and skirmishes I have mapped of the world of the of the, of the five kings. Uh, in the in the books and do a little kernel analysis, density analysis of that to okay was was the the worst part of the world that was of course in the in the Riverlands, being also the Riverlands, in fact the major crossroad of the Seven Kingdoms and the center of all the Seven Kingdoms. So you have to go over there and burn uh, Riverland in the in the field. So there you have. This is not uh, also only from the books, okay. In the battles, I don't think encounter the series because the last season are very, <laughs> very in that so in that aspect of the of the war and all. Okay, and also have uh, I do a, a season polygon analysis as a way to make an approximation to the influence of each noble house and the territorial power. I know that it's only based in Euclidean distance. It's brawling with this, but I don't have any any more info to. To do more complicated analysis, ah, besides obvious, it's uh, this uh, the the points for each of uh, polygon is basically the the major uh, city or castle that is mapped in the 
in the book. So it's, we have to assume that there are the upper level of the nobility and the, the way the power is, is distributed along the territory, uh, around the castles itself. So having us, there's this, do, I think, for the, all, all the, the kingdoms, uh, but having to focus in, in the north, you can see, well, aside from, we can discuss why I put the northern clans to uh, Alaska like territorial entity uh, without castle and well, maybe it's better with the castle, but this is the division, the theoretical division of, of power in the north. Also taking Winterfell and Stark uh, like, um, like the, other the, other, the other houses to get to know what's their direct control around Winterfell, not only they were the, the guardians of the north and one the the premiums, the primary houses, but there, are, you can see there. In fact, there, the control, the control is much less like the other houses. So, as in the case of the king, if the Stark didn't get well to where her, where were their vassals, they are very fucked, as in the as in the books with the Bolton, in fact. And you can see it's, they are fairly well balanced, and <coughs> the ones that start out, in fact, are the Manderly in the south, that are the ones that, aside from having the the control of the unique city of the of the north, White Harbor, have also two other castles in the, in control, and even the the two, the flints and the and the locks that are the these two ones are much of uh, following the Mandalorian's commands, as it says in the books, because you see for the geographical position there, they're also bind to them. And something similar uh, happens also in the rich when you can see the high, the high towers of Old Town have a very huge uh, quantity of vassals around them, their vassals, um, more territorial control than even the, the tyrants of, of High Canada have cows. So this also had to be a little bit with internal politics in the, in the kingdoms to, to get along well uh, and with the, ca with the castles and, and the towns. So this is a uh, bit for space. In fact, all of these maps are in the repository of my university, and later we see the link if you want to to see them in, in high size. And going to time, okay. Also from space, the time in Westeros is uh, have flow is uh, like uh, from legends and history of the master it has a lot of, of millennia, and also the, the material culture and the in this case even the people are different and evolved from coming from the from the dawn era of the children of the forest to the first men with with the with the bronze uh, weapons to the arrival of the of the Andals with a new religion also with iron uh, all of these have uh, generated uh, uh, enormous material culture also several ruins of the seven of the same kingdoms from coming age so one of like thousand of years like Mold Kelly also from the first man or oh, there are others more recently that summer hall that uh, burned I think it's like less than a century than this every is, is gone. That. So the the time flows and the castles are also reason but also the castles that are still in use have an evolution on their materiality and in their fortification around the, the time. So applying this case the building archaeology we can also trace the evolution, the evolutionary phase of, the, of some of these castles that are best described in the books, and we have more info for the maesters as the historian and chronicle sources of the, of the town. It's, uh, taking Winterfell as a case is a bit strange because it, have, it has uh, like six millennium minimum of life of a castle that like in the real world will be a, a huge tell to in this case, and the juridical construction is legendary by, by Brandon the Builder in the first man, but the, the historical um, status quo of the master, the more, the more uh, acceptable uh, theory is that was a series of first man reinforts that in some time merged and can this be the huge fault. So this would be the original construction and probably the only remains of this, of this phase would be the, the God's Wood because it's unchanged, because it's like it's, a, it's a second nature, and probably the deepest level of the crypts of the Stark should be probably also from this time. Later on, in, we have the first keep that is in ruin in some from a long time, and but is the we can trace is its building is after the arrival of the Andals because the run towers in in the Seven Kingdoms are a typology 
a yeah, building topology introduced by the Andal. So first man made a square towers. So, so, that thing. so that's the date before the before pressing is before the time of the Congress. And there are two dates of always because there are uh, historical debate about the masters was was the chronology. So there's a long chronology and a short chronology. So later on, the the next phase that is also um, dated by the master is the construction of the inner walls. That's in the third phase that was later on uh, built the mo the moat between the two walls and the outer wall that was built by the king of the of the north, Edric Snowbear. So we have in this later on not much information until the destruction of the watchtower, uh, the highest watchtower of Winterfell. Now it's, it's still not repaired around the two, okay, it's 200 uh, after the Aegon conquest. So as the, the seventh phase would be the construction of the Sept of the Seven after the the wedding of Edward Stark and Catelyn and Catelyn Chulli. That has is very interesting because it's is the materiality of the of a change in the spirituality of the castle, which got an, uh, introducing another another ghost also, and the last one is the sack of Winterfell by by the Boltons, and probably we hope the it'll be a nine phase with the reconstruction of of Winterfell. I suspect. But not even not only the the castles with so long history as as Winterfell has this evolution, but also we can trace this in the Red Keep like only with. Uh, Less than three centuries of, of history, they have I also I think six phases, seven phases. Uh, in from the beginning, from the previous phases of another uh, rings of fortresses and castles that were in the in the hill of Ayan, you can see in the in the picture with the construction of the first castle in wood and and from Ayan, and then all the the phase of the construction until the until the version of Maegor in the in the end with the with the Maegor Tower. And the last phase in this case in the books will be the destruction of the Hans Tower by Order or, or the Queen Cersei. And in the series it will be the destruction of, of all by by Daenerys and uh, and his dragon. Uh, so this is also a evolution, a very real evolution. So in conclusion we can see the that the complexity of the world uh, created by the Martin allows to, to apply an effective methodology Archaeological methodology, and it's very also very nice to 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 get to know more how these castles evolve, and also it's an interesting practical um, case study that I also use in my lessons in medieval archaeology. It's uh, always very appealing for this for the students. So you have well as the uh, the link to to image, and also is this presentation is coming as a, as a chapter next year in a in a volume. Uh, from Game of Thrones from the Humanities, one or two volumes, so it's quite nice it's you're going to see. I think I am the, see, I am the only archaeology writing on the book, the other are, are more historians, more than uh, answering story, but it's very, uh, I think, very nice. So these are the uh, and thank you all.